Today on Holland Reviews, I'm actually putting the reviews part of my username to good use by actually reviewing a series. Shocking, I know. So today on Holland Reviews, I take a look at a series that really exploded when it first came out in 2009, and that is Baki Monogatari. A series about an ex-vampire helping girls become free from anything ranging from gods to ghosts and even mythological beasts by beating the shit out of them. Wait, on second thought, that makes him sound too badass. Let's try that again. A show about a guy beating up... Lollycons. FIGHT! <laughs> <laughs> the harem genre and I don't really see eye to eye. This may be due to the fact that it is like a midget, which I can never see eye to eye with, or that when I look at it, all I see is a bunch of idiot women falling over a loser guy and fuck all happening. Wait, that's the Moe genre. What I meant to say was, and everyone acting like complete and utter dickheads. So when I first heard of the series Makamonogatari, which translates to ghost story, just like if you combine the words you and Uranus, you get the words Uranus, I immediately had my doubts and was expecting some kind of stupid plot full with idiotic decisions and women lining up to have what seemed to be interviews with the main character about why they should be the ones to harvest his loser genes, which I assume were the polar opposite of the main character's actual genes, because who in the right mind would want their kids to be, you know... Shit. But the fan base surrounding Bakumonogatari immediately said no to my previous accusations and responded by saying it was a masterpiece and a work of art that was in a genre all on its own. Now, as I not believing them due to the fact that whenever a series is called a masterpiece or a work of art, I immediately think of Evangelion, where the fan base would rather die than admit the series which is throwing ideas and religious concepts at a wall, hoping that they would stick and serve as an excuse for a deeper plot. Despite all this, I tried Bakumonogatari out anyway, and here's what I found out. First off, the characters in Bakumonogatari were as unique as stripes on a zebra and as complex as a motherfucking 10 by 10 Rubik's Cube, or at least most of our main character for the series is a high school student, which in this day and age what main character isn't, by the name of Koimi Araragi. Koimi is more than meets the eye though, for he is actually a vampire doing an encounter with a female vampire over his spring break. He was cured soon afterwards by a man named Meme Oshino, or, or aka an anime representation of me. Now since being cured by that devilishly handsome soul, Koimi has to deal with the lingering effects of his old vampire blood. Most notably his ability to see in the dark, aka night vision, having his eyes turn red when he's angry, aka Aegeus, or that he can heal from wounds that are potentially fatal or wounds that would normally take months to heal from in only a matter of hours, aka he's fucking invincible. The main heroine of the series is a girl by the name of Senjo Gahara Hitagi. She considers herself to be a tsundere, which is a term some people just don't know what the fuck means. So to help those people, here's a carefully constructed definition of the word made only by the most knowledgeable, illiterate, out of shape, and sexually inactive individuals on the internet, aka a stereotypical anime geek. The definition of tsundere as constructed by previously mentioned individuals is as follows. Tsundere is a Japanese character development process that describes the person who's in intentionally cold or even hostile towards another person before gradually showing them their warmer side over time. AKA a bitch with a heart. Now on top of that she's a sadist, as if she wasn't charming enough. And finally she's a weightless walking off supply store who had her weightlessness befall her doing an encounter with a giant crab who was motherfucking invisible. Have I lost you yet? No? Well good, cause for a second there I thought I was making fuck all sense. Now since telling you about any of the other characters in the series could potentially swallow you faster than milk spoiling out in the middle of the Sahara Desert, I will refrain from telling you in specifics about any of them, I will instead just say that they are one of the most colourful cast of characters I've seen in a long time, and no I don't mean hair. Otherwise. They're cool, fun to watch, and entertaining, but they don't go beyond these points, just like any good side character should. So, on to the story. Well, the story of Bakemonogatari is a bit bipolar, if you ask me. I say this because half the show is about a romantic relationship between Senju Gahara and Araragi, and the other half is about Araragi meeting other girls, because FYI, this is a harem anime, who have their own problems, just like Senju Gahara having the crabs problem, and no, I don't mean she had those kinds of crabs. Now again, I can't tell you in specifics and fear of spoiling the series more than Richard Hilton has spoiled his daughter Paris, but let me tell you this. The series is divided into five stories each featuring their own unique female character each time, just like an ice cream shop changes its flavour of the day every other day. The arcs are fairly short, ranging from 2 to 4 episodes, which prevents you, the viewer, from getting bored out of your fucking mind. Because as soon as you start getting tired of a certain arc or character, the show will restart itself, but this is also the series' greatest downfall. The reason being is that the arcs hold almost no connection to each other, which leads to two things. One, you may wonder what the main character from the past arc is doing whilst all the events in the current arc are going on, which has always been one of the problems with harems. And two, the relationship between Sanjo Gahara and Araragi 
feels distant slash frozen at certain points in the series. Now I feel that I must tell you, the viewer, that if you think this is going to be one of those stories where actions speak louder than words, then you are sadly mistaken. For Baki Monogatari's story is actually driven by the dialogue between characters rather than a character's actions. This being said, the characters aren't vomiting on the viewer vitally important facts and then highlighting them in every color of the rainbow for us viewers to more easily say, ah, I get it. Rather, much of the plot is given away through the casual discussion between two characters, or in the case of Aragi and Senjugahara, a series of verbal insults. This, in my opinion, causes the show's plot to flow at a very good pace and prevents any information overloads for us, the viewer, but can be admittedly as boring as a non-sex life at times. Now, there are some action and fight scenes in Bakumonogatari, but they are used mostly in a way to conclude an arc or for adding a bit of spice to the story. Now, the animation and visuals in Bakumonogatari are one of my favorite parts of the show due to my short attention span that can easily be pleased by lots of bright and flashing colors. Now, off that I say, I loved the animation in the show. It was very good when it needed to be, and also easily able to draw your eyes, much like an alien handing out free candy. But at the same time, it can be very confusing to understand what's going on during a particular scene due to the constant amount of pop ups, as if you were not supposed to see what's actually going on during the scene. Now, to help simulate the effects of these strange pop ups, I will now show a pop up at the same time intervals as you would as if you were watching the actual show, and you be the judge and tell me if they are brilliant or just plain annoying. The animation of Studio Chef really nailed the artistic styling, though, in my opinion, and the animation is really good, especially during the fight scenes. I do feel that it kind of cheated though because seeing the amazing animation only to be interrupted by the pop-ups got quite annoying but it was nothing that made the show unwatchable it was just kind of a nuisance like grocery shopping or going to the DMV or school or kids. Another thing about these pop-ups is some of them are not simply pop-ups saying red or black sometimes they actually have a large amount of information on them and either the story or just information in general that can help you understand the story. Now what's annoying about these is not the information that's on them but rather the way that in which they're presented which is usually three to five frames which is far too short of a window of time to be able to read the text on screen, and if you're so anal to actually just want to read all these, you might find yourself going frame by frame through some of the scenes and just to find all the information. There are many abstract and surreal scenes, unconventional cuts, and intriguing camera angles that made the viewing experience in Bakumonogatari very pleasant in my opinion, or at least unique, but I see why some people might not like it. The only real weird part about this series is when it tried to use real life photography feed and video, which to me seemed more out of place than a woman outside the kitchen, but in all honesty I really did like the way the show looked. Now there were times in the series where I could not find the motivation to sit down and read what felt like 18 minutes of subtitles, which at times made me think that the show wasn't trying to progress at all, and that it would rather bore you to death with idle conversation. The art would get on my nerves from time to time, and sometimes I felt like the director was purposely trying to mindfuck me at times. But despite all that, I really like this series, and is easily one of my favorites in terms of characters. And compared to other harem series I have seen, this series is proudly sitting on the top of its throne for being one of the best harem animes out there. Which isn't saying much, considering harems have a high tendency to be kind of shit anyway. So does the series live up to the immense hype that surrounds it about it being a true masterpiece and all? Well, in my eyes, no. But does that mean the series was bad? Hell no, I'm glad I watched this series, and I think that the anime community was right in holding it in such high regards despite some of its downfalls. And with the second season on the way and a movie in production, there's only one question I really want answered. When do I get to see more of that sexy anime version of me? So on the Holden Reviews anime scoreboard, which all scores are out of 10, Baki Monogatari scored an 8.7 for story, a 9.5 for characters, a 9.0 for animation, and a 8.7 for my overall enjoyment of the series. Giving this series a final score of 8.75 and Holden Reviews stamp of recommendation. With that, I hope you liked the review. This is Holden Reviews, I'm Holden, asking you to leave your comments and feedback below. Until next time, sayonara, see you later.